Good evening and welcome. What's this, our fourth day where we've hit temperatures of 90 degrees? It is still a scorcher. Uh, things have cooled down a little bit in the room, so I have worked on making this as cool as possible. So here I am waiting for uh, people to pop on. So we'll wait just a few minutes for everybody to log on. So hopefully everybody had a great day. Pushing through third week of July hard to believe that next week we're going to be into August. Um, some encouraging things. Uh, I'm starting to finish people from previous classes. Like today I finished up three people. Uh, so they were taking two hours per week of drive time. So drive times are going to start being a little bit more frequent for you. So uh, tomorrow I'll probably um, what I have left available so we'll do some type of scheduling for Saturday uh, probably tomorrow and I think I might have a few other spots here or there um, so I hope to really start getting into more driving now yesterday's class which was partly me and partly uh, from a previous record recording we ended on uh, drugs and driving and the thing that I want you to write down in your notes so we'll get this right out of the way is that the consequences for driving while under the influence of drugs are slightly different than drunk driving so you're gonna have your license revoked for 60 days up to two years so write that down so driving under the influence of drugs in New Hampshire revocation not suspension see alcohol is a suspension revocation which means that you may have to reapply. Um, it can be a little bit more uh, lengthy on getting it done uh, to get back out on the road. Uh, the other thing is remember the DRE. Uh, DRE stands for Drug Recognition Enforcement. So it's very difficult at times to detect whether someone's under the influence of drugs. Alcohol, you can smell it, you can see it in the eyes. We talked about the gazes is the gaze and astagmus test how the eyes the you know the eyes don't lie drugs are a little bit different so what they're going to do is they're going to call out a, a state trooper who's been trained to find these drugs in a system and they're going to do a series of battery of tests on the side of the road if they think that there's uh, enough evidence then they're going to probably take you to a hospital and do some type of chemical test to find out what type of drug that you're on now I do not want you to write this down uh, because I don't have the specifics because I did not uh, research it under the state statutes but I did want to give you a, a broad overview of this particular law because I used to deal with it I used to work for the state dealing with drunk driving uh, for a number of years this is what I want you to understand if you're at a party and there's drugs being used and sold Okay, once they come and break up the party, they're going to probably, you know, bring everyone down to the police station. Depending on the police department, they may try to attach certain criminal offenses to people that were at the party. I want you to understand, now this is probably more for people that are using or have it in their possession, is that even though you were not driving, there are still statutes on the law books, if people want to pursue this that could prevent you from one getting your license if you're not already a licensed driver or two if you are a licensed driver how to have your license taken away for a period of time because you were around um, I should say around you were you were either using or distributing so don't think that your license is going to be a separate thing um, because you are just at a party and it wasn't driving you weren't out on the roadways there are some laws out there 
they're kind of deep in the law books and a lot of police departments don't really go into that unless I guess if I guess I've been told that unless there's a long history of, of drug use and abuse then probably they're gonna try to attach a person's license to this so I just want to let you know that so that was really an overview of the last two classes about the attitudes the effects of alcohol Remember about treatment and recovery. There is an educational program that has to be completed in order to get your license back. And that um, once you're stopped, then there are gonna be probable cause. There's going to be a loss of license. There's gonna be education classes. There's gonna be a fine, attorneys. It's really, really expensive. So just please, 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 never find yourself in a situation, whether you're underage or over the age of 21, where you're getting behind the wheel of a car or with someone who's under the influence because it's gonna make your life very, very complicated. And attorneys are very expensive. I can't remember in that video whether we talked about how expensive, but um, well over $5,000. And we are gonna talk about insurance tonight a little bit. So let's kind of get into tonight's topic, which is car crashes and insurance. Something I hope that you never, ever have to uh, use in your life, but most people at some point whether they're a passenger or a driver, will have to uh, fill out uh, an accident report and to um, make a claim with the insurance company. So part of your homework tonight, uh, you had to do section nine, I believe. Where's the, uh, yeah, section nine in the manual. And uh, the crash report is on the remote Facebook page. I just downloaded it about a uh, half hour ago. There's two sheets, so make sure that you uh, download that. And that's going to be your activity at the very end of class. So let's kind of dive right into our class. All right. Accidents and financial responsibility. Now, the state of New Hampshire still uses the word uh, accidents rather than crash, but I like the word crash. So let's talk about some definitions here. You probably heard we're training you to be a defensive driver. We're training you to pick up problems down the road so you're not involved in bad situations. And that's part of being a good driver. You just don't want to um, react to everything that's happening. You want to act, all right? So if every driver always obeyed the rules and always drove sensibly, driving would be simpler and safer. So the two things I want you to write down and part of what I want you to implement into your driving every day, whether it be with me or with your parents, look down the road, look for where people are having issues. Where are the people on the roadway making mistakes? A lot of people ask me, what is the hardest thing to teach a young driver? I think parking is easy. I think lane changes are a little bit more complicated. I think anything where you have moving vehicles where you really can't tell what they're doing at times, it's, it's a recipe for disaster. And most people can't process in their mind quick enough speed, distance, and what they need to do, and that's when they're getting into trouble. I don't think any of you are gonna have problems with angle parking or backing out into a roadway, um, but I think some of you dealing with intersections where cars are not yielding the right of way or someone making a lane change with not enough distance in front coming back in front of you, then there's always a chance there's gonna be a crash. So the first part is looking for where those problems are. The second part that I want you to write down is what can I do to make it better? Am I willing to move my car? Now remember, we can only do three things when we're driving a vehicle. We can brake, accelerate, and steer. So part of being a good driver is you must know what's the combination that I need at this point to get myself out of this bad situation. So always think, is there an echo again today? All right, I've got to always look down when I switch over slides because I've got two microphones on at the same time. Please, 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 if you see or if you hear an echo, please put it in the comments so I can uh, take care of it. Okay, other parts of being a defensive driver, staying alert, keeping your eyes moving, so don't just stare straight ahead. You should be looking to the left, looking to the right. Look in your rear view mirror. Now, one of the things I'm trying to hammer home to all of you, and I've driven with probably about five or six of you so far, is every time that you use your signal, check your rear view mirror, finish your turn, check your rear view mirror. You always want to know what's happening behind you, especially where you're slowing down to make a turn and then you're accelerating out. How are people reacting to what you've just done? How close are they really getting to you? 
So we talked about looking for trouble spots up ahead. Proper following distance, remember four seconds, a little bit more in bad weather. Expect the driver to do the wrong thing and you should always know if they're going to do the wrong thing, then what is my next course of action? What do I need to do to make the situation a little bit better? Okay, at some point in your life, you're gonna probably be hit. So what are the steps that we should follow in the car if we're gonna get hit? So how to protect yourself, being hit from the rear. If someone was to say, you get to choose, you can get hit from the rear, the front, or either side. Which one would you choose? Okay, choose from the back, all right? Always choose from getting hit in the back. That is not um, a very bad crash. I guess if they're going, if you're stopped and they're going 40 or 50, it's gonna be pretty violent. But a lot of times if you're moving and they're moving, they're just gonna be pushing your vehicle. So be careful about how close you are to other cars. So whether you're moving, you gotta have that uh, four second following distance. But if you're stopped behind people, make sure that you can see their tires touching the pavement on the, on the road, all right? That's how far back. And that way you're not getting pushed into another vehicle. Um, there is gonna be some type of a violent push of your, your body forward. So remember, you know, brace yourself, you know, in your seat because you're gonna be getting pushed and then there's gonna be the, uh, the opposite reaction where your head could kind of pop over, you know, the back of the headrest and that's where ramping takes place. So that's why you wanna brace your head firmly against the, the headrest. Being hit from the side. So write this down in your notes. I really have a problem with students that are driving in downtown Durham and Dover and they're getting too close to park cars. When you are driving and you have a chance of being hit from park cars backing out of parking spots um, or even intersections, move your vehicle away from where there's going to be contact. Don't just hold your position in your lane and think that everything's gonna be okay. So change your position, always go left of center or if you're in the left lane, go right of center if you're downtown Durham, away from the angle parking spots. Because if they back out of a parking spot and you're, you're centered in your lane, it could be a distance of maybe four feet before they hit you. But if you move an extra foot and a half, two feet, that's just enough that maybe they can stop again or you could speed up and get by them. So try to take a different position when you're by angle parking vehicles going through a downtown area. And sometimes if you see their backup lights, remember backup lights are white. So if you see their backup lights, you're speeding, you're speeding up to get to get by them as quickly as possible. Being hit from the front is by far the worst. All right. Do everything in, that's human possible to slow your car down. So you're hitting the brake pedal is just as hard as you possibly can. You've got to remember, you cannot break the brake. So when you know that you're going to get hit, you got to hit that brake pedal for all your muscles are worth. All right. It's just hit it hard. Um, brace yourself, like we said before, because you're going to get pushed forward. The airbag's going to come out. So remember, side airbags come out with side crashes depending on where you get hit on the side but the only crash that your airbag doesn't come out I should have mentioned is being hit from behind so you're not gonna have an airbag for being hit from behind you now don't write this down if you're not in a shoulder harness or a seat belt um, just kind of get away you know from where you're gonna be hitting the instrument panel or the steering column this is, I don't even think that's in your new manual this is a slide that I use from the old manual back when cars didn't have airbags they were really afraid that if you didn't have an airbag and you didn't have a seat belt on all your vital organs are right here between your your you know your shoulder blade um, your collarbone and your belly button so if you're hitting the steering column you're busting ribs and the ribs are puncturing lungs and other organs so they're telling you to kind of move away from the 
move away from the steering wheel if you don't have an airbag or a seat belt on. So I guess if you're in an older car, that's still good to know, but all cars now for the last 15, 20 years have airbags. All right, so let's talk about you're involved in your first crash. The first thing that I want you to write down, and I've got this in capital letters, please, please stop. There's nothing going to be worse than if you drive away from a crash. In the day of cell phones and cameras, people are going to take a picture. Surveillance cameras, people on their cell phones are going to take a picture of you driving away. And now you've got another offense that you've got to deal with, and that's a hit and run. So stop. Now, this is where I disagree with what the state wants you to do. It says, if you can, move your vehicle off the road so you do not block traffic. What they're trying to say is that they don't want you to get hit again. So if you're in a bad spot, like just around a corner, over a hill, you probably may get hit again. So that's pretty dangerous. So then what you would want to do is, if your car is able to, to move, is to put your directionals on and move off to the side of the road, put your hazards on. But what I think you should do is that if people can get around where your vehicle has hit another car, that's probably your best bet. And then if someone's injured, you're going to have to move them anyways. So moving them in a car that's movable, not a good thing. So just stay there till help comes and then they'll tell you what to do with the vehicle. But if it doesn't look that bad, uh, before you move the car, this is what I want you to write down. Okay, and we're going to talk a lot about this today in class is take out your cell phone and take a picture of all four sides of the crash. So get back about 40, 50 feet from where the crash happened and take your camera out and take a picture on all sides, like north, south, east, and west. Just don't take one picture. What the state usually does is they try to recreate a crash, especially if it's a bad one. So they're going to take pictures and they're going to take measurements. That way they can always recreate what actually happened. So we're basically doing the same thing that the police would do. So I would do that before I move my car, right? So if you can get out, you're not seriously hurt. Nobody's seriously hurt in your car. But you just want to show where someone crossed the center line, hit your car, um, took off your mirror or whatever. Just take a picture, all four sides. Call 911. 911. I'm sorry. <laughs> that is one of the most important things. Now, if there are other people that are behind you or are coming towards you, they've probably pulled over the side of the road and they've already done that, especially if it's a pretty severe crash. So you need help there as quickly as possible because injured people, if it's severe, um, saving one's life is, is paramount and minutes are precious. So we don't want those to kind of flee away. So get help there as quickly as possible. The other thing is that if you know first aid, try to help people out, but stay within your skill level of giving first aid. Um, what happens if the people sue you? A lot of people say, I don't want to help people because I'm afraid I'm going to have a lawsuit. There are laws on the book that will protect people that stay within their skill set. Okay, so if you've been trained in CPR, first aid, then as long as you do what you've been trained to do and you can prove that, then you're going to be okay. But you don't want people to get more injured or to have more issues if you don't help them. Um, and it would be a shame if someone needed your help and uh, you did not offer it. Now, I know some people don't like blood. That's a different story. There's no sense for you to go up to help somebody and you look inside the car, you see blood and you pass out. And now we're going to have to get you on a stretcher and help you. So that's not good. So if it doesn't bother you and you feel somewhat comfortable with first aid, please, please help other people. Get the names and addresses of other people involved. Um, this is going to be part of your homework. I'm going to throw this on the screen right now so you get to see it. I hope this will work. Let's see if I can find it. Um, I thought I had it right up at the top. Oh, there it is. Okay. Let me show you. There it is. Okay, this is that sheet that I put on Facebook. So this is what you're going to be filling out. This is an official state of New Hampshire um, accident report. And that's the first sheet. Let me put on the second sheet. 
I like the second sheet. I like this sheet a little bit better. So this is the second sheet. So this is what you're going to be doing at the end of today's class. Okay, this is what you have to have on file. So we're going to do that a little bit later. So you're going to have to get names of injured people. And you can go online uh, with some of your friends in class if you know some people that are taking driver's ed here and you want to do this worksheet together because it's going to be your vehicle and somebody else's vehicle, you could kind of do it as a group activity. I have no problem with that. Those that don't know anybody or don't want to get involved with anybody, you just make up a fictitious person and just kind of put in the information that you think okay, would be filled out. So what are you going to be writing down on this accident report? The name and address of other people. Now, please, if you are on the side of the road and you've called the police, the police will help you with this. But if the police are not going to get involved and you're going to do this on your own, I emphatically want you to take out your phone and ask the person to take out their license and take a picture of their license. It's easier to have an image and then write all this stuff out when you're at home than to be writing out all this stuff on the side of the road because you're going to probably be pretty sh shooken up by everything. All right? So on a license, you're going to have name, date of birth, address, their license number. Um, registration, take a picture of that too. Uh, registration will give you the make of the vehicle, the model and the year of a vehicle, damage to the car, the insurance company. Now write this down in your notes because you're going to have to get this later tonight. Ask your parents, you know, grab a hold of them someplace in the house. Ask them, mom, who do we have our car insurance with? This is important information for you to know because you're going to be a licensed driver probably within the next three, four weeks. Uh, well, maybe because the state's taking a little bit longer, but I'm going to have you done in the next three, four weeks. So once you get your license, you get out on the road, you need to know this. People that you have run into are going to ask you, who do you have your insurance with? You don't want to go, let me call my mom. I, I'm not really sure. You should have that on your person in your wallet or purse or in your car so you can provide that information um, to the person that you hit. Model year of the vehicle, that's on the registration, as we said, insurance company name and the names and addresses of passengers that are involved. Give the other driver the same information. So take out your license, you know, show it to them. Now on the crash report, it's gonna say what happened. So give the details of the crash, give the date, the time, the location, what was the road conditions? Like if we use today, it was 93 degrees, it was warm, um, the road was dry, the sun was in my eyes. You're giving details of what it was like while you were out on the road. You're gonna ask like directions. I was heading you know, southeast on Route 108, so you gotta know your street routes and things like that. Then you're gonna, um, oh, if it's involved a parked vehicle or property, leave a note. And I'm gonna show you a note that someone uh, put down. Not the, the wisest thing to do, uh, the way that he did his note. Uh, contact your insurance company. There's gonna be a claim number. Uh, we'll talk more about that at the end of tonight. Uh, but there is a number you're gonna have to call with your insurance company to get everything on file. The other thing is that even though you may not feel like you're hurt, um, muscles stiffen up, you have neck injuries um, that will crop up overnight, go see a doctor. They may give you a muscle relaxant or something. It's really important that they have on record that uh, you have bruising um, because if you ever take it to court, you gotta have proof that it happened during the crash. It didn't happen two days later when you, let's say you wait two days after a crash. They're gonna ask you, what did you do in those two days? Did you go to school? Did you play sports? Did you fall downstairs? Those are all things that could come up. But if you if it shows right on the record that you filed a report at three o'clock and you saw your doctor at four o'clock, okay, pretty much not too much happened between you being hit in that one hour. So that's why you want to see it see a doctor quite quickly. Oh, here's here's the note. Okay, you do not want to leave a note like this. Hi, my name is Jack. I accidentally hit your um, car, someone saw me, so I'm pretending to write down the details. Sorry. 
Now, he did leave a note, but he didn't put his, his name. Uh, well, he did give his name, Jack, but not his full name or a phone number, okay? So he was just trying to pretend he was doing the right thing, and he actually wasn't. So this you need to know. It's in bold type. I believe this is in the new manual. Um, so I will test you on that, on this hint, hint, on the final. In New Hampshire, any type of crash that you have where someone is injured or killed or there's property damage, over $1,000, you must file an official crash report, and that's what we're working on tonight, to the DMV within 15 days. All right, really, really important. If you're not sure, still file it. If a police officer comes, and they do a report, then the report that they file is going to be adequate, it's going to be enough, then you're not going to have to, to do it, all right? But still, I, I would still put my version because some police officers are very busy and they just do a very superficial um, report. Like we were hit in the driver's ed vehicle in Portsmouth a while back, probably eight years ago. P uh, Portsmouth police did not really help that much. Okay, so it was up to us to get everything on record. If your car um, can be moved off the main part of the roadway, make sure it can be seen for at least 200 feet. Put flares, reflectors. If you don't have that, then you're going to put your emergency flashes on. Really important that you don't want one crash to lead to another crash. All right, we talked about calling 911. Make sure cars are turned off. You don't want any cars sparking or arcing where there's going to be any type of a fire. So make sure um, if people are, are trapped and you think that there could be a fire, then by all means, you've got to get them out. I just saw a newscast probably about two weeks ago in Massachusetts where a car went off the edge of the road. It started to um, smoke and it looked like it was starting to catch fire. Small fires took place. They were able to, um, people pulled over the side of the road and were able to drag the guy out through the window. It was, it was amazing. Um, and people were actually filming it, and that's why I made the newscast, because it was um, it's pretty substantial, um, you know, the work that they had to do to get the guy out. But uh, they did pull him out through the window because they couldn't get the door open. Um, but they saved the guy's life. They saved the guy's life. Now, if you... Look real close. There is a gap between the silver car, which is in front of the red car, and the white car. This was the last crash that we had in the driver's ed vehicle. And by the way, we have never had a car crash in the driver's ed vehicle where the student was at fault. I've been hit twice. That's all. Ever. In the driver's ed vehicle um, where there was uh, major damage. And it was not the student's fault. One was an elderly man made a lane change without doing a shoulder check and we were in his blind spot and he ran us right off the road. Okay, he was like 85. Um, this one was two years ago, th three years ago, and right here in Durham, right near Saxby's, where a car came out in that little opening between the silver car and the white car on a Saturday morning, right around 9, 30, 10 o'clock. Okay, and hit us right on the passenger side. Okay, they w were not paying attention. They were not inching out into doing those safety stops that I've told you to practice. There's the damage to the driver's ed vehicle. Now, um, I don't have anything with me right now to hold up, but I am going to put this out. So if you are still watching and you're on YouTube, so uh, actually don't do it through YouTube. Do this through your phone, all right? The person that guesses the closest to the damage amount, I'm going to give you a tire pressure gauge. All right. I'm going to go to Advanced Auto Body this weekend and I'm going to purchase because I gave one away to the, uh, someone from the last class. So I don't have any more tire pressure gauges. But if you can guess, okay, so text me what you think the total damage to that driver's ed car right there. That's the only thing that's being fixed right there. Okay. There's nothing else on the car that's being fixed, but how much is that damage right there? And I'll let you know um, after I think everybody's given me an answer.
We'll see how close you are to guessing how expensive it is to, to get a car fixed. There's the damage to the uh, college kid's car. Um, you can see the white of our vehicle right on the corner of, uh, of theirs. Um, there's the license plate, but it's from Massachusetts. Surprise, surprise. But I did black out, so we don't know what the, uh, the actual number is. Here's her cert uh, certificate of registration. So I am going to um, tell you that processing this crash report was extremely easy because the Durham police did a wonderful job of having us exchange information. I bet you we exchanged information once the officer got there in less than five minutes and we both could drive our vehicle away. So it was really painless. I had no problems with her insurance company. Um, we did get the car fixed. The only problem I had is it took like two weeks to get my car back. So I wasn't too happy about that. Uh, here's the girl that hit me. Um, she was from Massachusetts, as I said. But notice, there, everything I've got blacked out is the information that you need to fill into that crash report. So that's what I want you to do. Oh. Let me do this. I think I get, um, hold on a second. I, I'm going to get my marker. I'm going to tell you what your license number is. So let me get my whiteboard out. Actually, I'm going to get out my license. I got it right here. Everybody get an answer for what the damage is? Let's see what people are, are writing, what they've got for. There's only a few of you, only a few guesses. Ah, there's some good guesses. I see one that's really close. I'll just wait a minute. So this is going to be your um, your license number and actually I'm not gonna do all of it I'm gonna make it up because I don't since this is going on YouTube I don't want it to be um, too factual so I'll make it up Okay, here we go. This is what I want you to write down, and I'll, I'll get into the big screen here so you can see it. Okay, I kind of faked my license number, but what I want you to write down, write down, this is the month that you were born, okay? So this would be August, all right? The first letter of your last name, the last letter of your last name. So my, my name is Toll, begins with a T, ends with an E. So first letter of your last name, last letter, last letter of your last name, first letter of your first name, the year you were born, okay, two digits. So some of you will be 04, the day you were born. And then if there's nobody else in the state with this type of sequence, then you're a one, all right? So this is your license number, all right? So everybody should know that's what your license number is. And it's right, it's right on your license. See, I didn't hold it up uh, enough so you would see. Let me get back. If you're the first person at the scene and there's a fire, try to, uh, you know, put it out, uh, get people out away from the vehicle. The one thing that I want to mention about electrical wires, 
So I want you to write this down because I do think it's important, um, especially if you're the one that went off the road and hit a telephone pole and it came down. Remember that if you hit a telephone pole and there's power li lines on it and the lines come down on your vehicle, if you're still awake and breathing, nothing's going to happen to you, all right, unless the car catches fire. But just because it's sparking doesn't mean that you're going to get electrocuted. The problem with sparking wires or a live wire on your vehicle, most people see the wire on the car, you know, um, they're all over the vehicle. And people get nervous, and I'm going to get back out of, out of the, the screen here and go to the big one, is that when you get out of the vehicle, you open up the door and you drop, you drop your left foot where? You drop it out on the ground. Where's your right foot? It's still in the car. Guess what you've just done? You become grounded. You are now going to get electrocuted. All right? So what this is telling you is that you need to kind of stand up in your car and then jump, jump out with both feet to get out of the vehicle. Um, the best thing is to wait for the power company or anybody that's going to, you know, turn off the power. But you're in your car, you're still breathing, you're still living. Don't get so nervous that you get out. Now, a person under the influence of drugs or alcohol, that's, you know, they may want to get away. So th they're probably not thinking, if I open the door and step out, I'm going to get electrocuted. Well, they, they are, and they're not thinking about it. So give aid to injured people. We've talked about that. Stay with injured people until the ambulance arrives. If you're not the first person at the scene of a crash, keep going on because you want to kind of keep the area relatively clean and by the way we have come across a couple crashes before and we've had to pull over and I personally I didn't have a student at the time I was going to drive with a student and I was driving there but I saw a bad crash on the Spalding and um, I waited probably 15 20 minutes till the ambulance came and the girl was pretty messed up the passenger um, I don't know whether she made it or not but it, it was pretty bad I do know the car that hit them. He did die. I saw that in the paper. He had a heart attack, and that's why he crossed the road. And he hit two um, teenagers, two sisters. The driver was seat belted and was already out of the vehicle. When I got out of my car, pulled it over the side of the road, and went to the crash, the driver who was belted was already out of the vehicle walking around. Her sister was not in her seat belt. And back then, there were not airbags in the car. Her sister hit the windshield, and she was having convulsions. So she was pretty bad. Um, the other bad thing that's happened in the driver's ed vehicle is probably the worst thing is that we did hit and kill a dog. This was on Route 4 going to Portsmouth on our um, highway lesson. A uh, dog was chasing an animal. Uh, came out as quickly like a flash. Now, you know I have a uh, instructor brake on my side, so I can brake. I can reach over and grab the steering wheel. Um, we both tried to do something and neither one of us was able to prevent what ultimately happened where the dog got hit. Um, the owner, we did find the owner. We're supposed to find the owner. We did call the police. The owner um, apologized. He said this was his second dog that he's lost within the last five years. Um, he doesn't know how it got away from his run, but it was loose. And you're supposed to have your dog, you know, secured at home or on a leash if you're walking it but the driver student driver was so shooken up by it that um, he didn't want to drive didn't want to drive so I had to drive back to school and um, it was probably a week or two before we drove again they just didn't feel comfortable quite yet so even though a crash isn't your fault it can you know get the best of you and it may affect the way that you drive. So just, just kind of remember that. Um, the other thing, and I think I'll talk about it now because we're talking about, about animals. I'm going to put this in and see if this comes up. All right. So please write this down in your notes. This is the first time ever in all 35 years that I've been teaching driver's ed that I've ever uh, spoke on this topic. And I probably should have because um, it's not just because it's been so hot lately is why I'm really thinking about it. And it came on the newscast like two days in a row. And I said, well, if it's 
important enough for them to include it in the newscast then it's important enough for me to talk about in driver's ed so please write this down I'm not going to test you on it so this is only for your own information which I want you uh, to remember please 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 um, my dog is not with me right now she did not sneak in my office here she's probably someplace cooler with my wife uh, but I have a black lab who I love dearly and um, we make it a uh, point not to take her out in vehicles when it's severely too warm. So what I want you to uh, write down is that in roughly 20 minutes, okay, in roughly 20 minutes, and it's been about 90, 95, okay, so a, a short drive is probably 20 minutes, okay, most people are going places, you know, shopping or whatever, it's going to take you 15, 20 minutes. The inside temperature is going to be right around um, 124 to 130 if it's 30 minutes at 95 degree weather okay that is extremely hot and um, animals can go into seizures as well as kids I would never even leave a young child you know a toddler okay alone like five or six alone in a car well I was to go into a store no 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 even with the door or the, not the door, the window cracked a little, excuse me, um, a bit. Still very, very dangerous, okay? Now this was um, done with a study where they said the outside temperatures range from 72 to 96, so that's why we've got some um, various temperatures here. Um, and if you have a dark sedan, they say, uh, as well as light gray as a minivan, okay, on a partly cloudy day would exceed 125 within 20 minutes. So that's way too ho too high. So don't leave your animals in the car. Any animals, dogs, cats, hamsters, I don't know what you travel with, but not suited. Actually, my uncle brings his dog everywhere. And if he has to go into a store, he actually will lock the car and keep the air conditioning going. And he'll do that for 15, 20 minutes um, because he doesn't want to leave the dog at home. So he is keeping it cool inside. Um, I would have left the dog at home. I don't think the dog's going to love being in the car like that. So that's it. All right. Now let's get into the, the real hard subject of insurance. I will tell you right now, if you take good notes for the next Oh, 25 minutes, all right, when we talk about insurance, you will save money, okay? I will guarantee if you take some of the things that we talk about and you share it with your parents, okay, you will save money when it comes time to be putting your parents' policy or to get your own policy. You've got to remember is that insurance is not a set price. Depending on the company, it will vary. Some are real expensive and some are cheaper. So we're going to kind of talk about some key um, terms when it comes to insurance and basically what can we do to make insurance a little bit cheaper. So I'll give you some, some idea about that. Now, New Hampshire has no mandatory insurance law. I think there's only three other states, South Carolina um, and maybe Arizona. I'm not sure, but there's like three states that don't have mandatory, which means that if you're older than 18, and you own the car outright, you do not have to have car insurance. Now, I highly recommend having liability, and we'll talk about what, what do you mean by liability, and are there different types of insurance? Yes, there are. There are different components to an insurance policy, so we're gonna talk about what is an insurance policy. But if you're involved in a crash with no insurance, you'll be held responsible for all payments. So let's just say that you hit somebody and you did like $30,000 worth of damage. If you don't have insurance, that $30,000 is coming out of your pocket. That's a lot of money. It will take you forever to get it paid for. And the state may suspend your license unless you have some type of payment plan um, on place okay, to take care of that other person. So you may be without a license for a while if you can't pay for it. So let me show you what an SR, um, and this is for DWI, but this is an SR-22. When deciding whether or not to hire a DWI lawyer, many people consider the direct consequences of a DWI conviction, a loss of license, 
fine, possibly having to take some alcohol classes. But one a collateral consequence that many people don't realize is that the state will require you to carry something called SR-22 insurance. It's a very expensive form of insurance and you're required to carry it as a condition of your license for a minimum of three years. Now I don't sell insurance, so I can't tell you what the specific cost would be, but I know that the expenses are absolutely astronomical. That's why it's important to consider all the consequences when determining whether or not to fight this charge. I'm attorney Ryan Russman, and I look forward to meeting with you. So that was dealing with DWI, but if you had to have insurance because of your uh, poor driving record, uh, reckless driving, there are other uh, situations where the state may require you to have insurance. And SR-22 is for three years. He says he doesn't know the exact amount, but you can almost guess. I've dealt with it for a while. Um, you're looking at probably three to $5,000 per year for three years. That's pretty hefty in order to drive. Now that's on top of what you're paying for your car insurance. So we're not talking car insurance. SR-22 is not car insurance, it's liability insurance. It's a very specific type that's on additional amount, all right? Look at this for new drivers. Who is the most costliest state to have insurance? Wow, 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 how about that? We rank number one. Look at Maine, number three. Connecticut, number five. Rhode Island, number two. Man, New England is brutal. Uh, the one thing I want you to write down in your notes is that insurance is based upon crashes and tickets. Speeding tickets will make your insurance rates go up. A lot of people think it's, oh, if I don't get in an accident and I just get speeding tickets, my insurance will stay the same. No, 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 no. Okay. The way that you drive will affect your policy and how much you pay. So the more tickets you get, the more crashes you have, goes up, 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 up. So it's gonna keep on spiking. In your notes, you do not see a benefit of safe driving. Even if you go three years, four years in a row, you do not see any significant change in your insurance until you reach the age of 24. So for the next eight years, the state and the insurance company looks you at still as being an inexperienced driver, um, highly impulsive. Your judgment, your reasoning is not as mature as it should be, and they're going to penalize you for being young. That's just a fact. Once you get older, then you start seeing a change in your insurance. Okay, let me show you this uh, video on insurance and then I'll come back and I'll talk about um, the terms that they talk about. So take notes during this video. I think it's only about um, nine minutes long, something like that, eight minutes long, but it really talks about insurance and about what makes up an insurance policy and how it really works. She's an insurance agent, so I thought it was really good to get her input on this. So let's take a look at this. Hello. My name is Lisa LaLiberty. I'll be speaking on the basics of auto insurance. For most people, buying an automobile is their first major purchase. Actually, a new car is second only to a home as the most expensive purchase many consumers make. With vehicle prices averaging over $28,000, it's easy to see why one would want to protect that investment. Before we talk about coverage for the automobile itself, I'd like to start with what many people believe is the most important coverage of all, liability coverage. Liability coverage pays for the injuries or damage you or someone driving your car cause to other people or their property. The two liability coverages are called bodily injury liability and property damage liability. Every state has different laws dictating the minimum coverage you must carry for this. Some states require you to prove you have insurance before registering a motor vehicle and other states use the honor system where you only have to provide proof if you have an accident or violation. A typical state required minimum coverage is 25, 50, 10. And I'll provide an example shortly to explain what that means. There are four states that do not require drivers to carry any liability coverage. Just because it's not required by law doesn't mean you don't need it. Let's say you have an accident. You're distracted momentarily and rear end the BMW in front of you. There are three people in it, all of whom suffer some injury. 
If you're carrying liability coverage of 25, 50, 10, that means your insurance company will cover the cost of any one person's injuries, rehabilitation expenses, pain and suffering, and time lost from work up to $25,000. But they will not pay more than $50,000 for the accident, regardless of the number of people injured. This is the bodily injury portion. And your insurance company will pay up to $10,000 for the property damage. So three people are injured. Let's say their injuries total $75,000. And the BMW has rear end damage of $13,000. Your policy will pay for $50,000 for all injuries and $10,000 for the property damage. Where does the remaining $25,000 for bodily injury and $3,000 for property damage come from? Once your policy pays the maximum limits, you could be held personally responsible for the remaining amount. It's generally recommended that you carry more than the state minimum coverage to protect yourself from this financial risk. The next coverage under an automobile policy is medical payments coverage. This provision protects you and your passengers if you're hurt in a car accident, regardless of who's at fault. The coverage also extends to you and your family members if you're a passenger in someone else's car or if you're a pedestrian injured by an automobile. Medical payments coverage pays the medical bills resulting from an accident up to a per person maximum, commonly $5,000. There are no deductibles and no waiting period under this coverage and prescription drugs related to the injuries are covered. Consider that accident with the BMW again. Let's say that you and your passenger are both injured and taken by ambulance to the hospital. Medical payments coverage of $5,000 will cover the cost of the ambulance ride, the emergency room visit, and subsequent doctor's visits up to $5,000 per person. If your medical bills total $7,000 and your passengers total $3,000, the policy will pay $8,000 under this coverage. Some states have a medical payments coverage known as personal injury protection, or PIP. This coverage may have a deductible, and it may allow you to collect for lost wages and rehabilitation expenses, two things that regular medical payments coverage does not cover. A third coverage provided by an automobile insurance policy is uninsured and underinsured motorist coverage. This coverage is quoted similarly to bodily injury liability. Even though mandatory insurance laws exist in 48 states, nearly 15% of all accidents are caused by uninsured drivers. Uninsured motorist coverage provides protection for you and your passengers when you're injured in an accident with an uninsured motorist. It will cover your medical bills, rehabilitation expenses, lost wages, pain and suffering, things you could have claimed against the at-fault party's insurance if they had it. Underinsured motorist coverage will cover those same losses if the at-fault party's coverage is insufficient for your loss. Keep in mind, in most states, the uninsured, underinsured motorist coverage applies to injury only and not for damage to your vehicle. Protection for your automobile is provided under the collision and comprehensive portions of a policy. Collision coverage applies when you have an accident involving another vehicle or an object, such as a telephone pole, a guardrail, a building, or when you overturn your vehicle. Comprehensive coverage applies in losses involving fire, theft, vandalism, broken glass, hitting an animal, flood or hail damage, or other losses not caused by collision. These coverages have a deductible, the amount you must pay before the insurance company pays for damages. Common collision deductibles are $500 or $1,000, and common comprehensive deductibles are $100 or $250. If your automobile is financed, then you're required by the bank or financer to carry comprehensive and collision coverages until that loan is paid off. It's important to note, an insurance company will never pay more to fix your vehicle than the vehicle is worth. Two other coverages available through many insurance companies are towing and emergency road service and rental car reimbursement. While these coverages are optional, I always recommend them as part of my full coverage package. Automobile insurance rates are based on many factors, including where you live, your age, what you drive, how much you drive, and the coverage you carry. 
One way to keep your insurance costs down is to take high comprehensive and collision deductibles. As a vehicle gets older and is not financed, many people choose to drop these two coverages completely as a way to save money. Additionally, many people choose to pay for small claims out of their own pockets as a way to keep their rates down. But remember, the coverage you carry is just one of the factors contributing to the cost of insurance. There are things you can do to make sure you get the best price possible. The first is to keep your driving record clean. Your driving record is used as a predictor of future experience. Accidents and violations stay on your record for three years, and major violations and suspensions stay on for five years. Many companies now use a scoring model that combines your driving record with a variety of other information, including certain elements of your credit history and prior insurance claims to determine your cost for insurance. This means that paying bills on time could affect your insurance rate, as could the number of claims you file on your policy. Automobile insurance can be confusing, but a little knowledge can go a long way in providing you the protection you need. Okay, insurance can be a little confusing. That can be a lot confusing, all right? So let's kind of break things down to some basic key components that you need to know. First one, there are three terms. You absolutely need to know these for the final. Hint, 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 okay? Question, question, question. First one, policy. An insurance policy is a legal contract between you and the insurance company, all right? It's not, there's no other third party, it's just two, two people, you and them, all right? Both have to be in agreement. It's a pretty lengthy document. They wrote it, they expe expect you to read it and agree to it. If you don't agree to it, you have to have it amended. Get a different policy. Second thing I want you to write down, what is the policy cost? That's called a premium. The amount of money that you pay each year for your insurance policy is called a premium. Now, we can set up different types of schedules for payment, which means monthly, bi-monthly, which means twice, uh, once every two months. We could do it uh, once every three months, once every four months, semi-annually, which would be twice a year. But let me tell you, the more you break it into smaller pieces, the more you're going to be paying over the long run just save money right there if you pay all of the fee up front all of the premium up front it's at a discount once they start breaking it down into smaller pieces they've got to mail it out or email it to you they're gonna add what they call administrative cost so a twelve hundred a twelve hundred dollar premium if you were to break it up into twelve months you think well that's a hundred dollars a month yeah if it was that simple but you look at your bill and they're charging you like 118 and you're thinking what's the 18 dollars for it's for what they call administrative costs so you multiply that 18 by 12 okay you're looking at probably right around 230 220 dollars okay you, that's that's quite a bit of money quite a bit of money now she was trying to explain a deductible so what I want you to write down Deductible is the amount of money you pay for each crash before the insurance company steps in and takes over. All right? So let's say, like she gave you, we'll make it really simple, a $10,000 um, repair on your vehicle. You have a deductible of $500. You pay $500, they pay $9,500. Pretty good, right? Yeah. That's why insurance premiums are so high. Because when you have a car crash, what they have to pay out is pretty expensive. Now, this is where you're going to save some money. So write this down. Ask your parents tonight after class and see what, they, what they've got for deductibles. So write this down. The higher the, the deductible, so you're paying $500. Let's say that you go to a $1,000 deductible. You just doubled it. Your premium is going to go down. So the higher the deductible the lower the premium. The lower the deductible, the higher the premium. All right? Now, I always pay the highest deductible that I possibly can get. Most insurance companies will only do $1,000. 
I don't get involved in car crashes. My wife doesn't get involved in car crashes. Neither do my children. So we always go with an extremely high deductible for most parts of our insurance policy. When it's for glass and other things, there are different parts of your policy that can call for different deductibles. But the higher you go, the more you're gonna save. Just, just know that. The higher your deductible, the more you're going to save. Now, the one thing I do want you to, um, Oh, let's see if I can get out of this. I'm going to have to unlock it. So, excuse me. And I am going to say goodbye. So you will not see me for the rest of the night. There I go. This is the liability that you have to have in New Hampshire. 25, don't write this down. 25,000 for injury or death to one person. 50,000 for injury or death to more than one person. 25,000 damage to property. That is the bare minimum. But if you were to take an actual insurance policy, their limits are much higher. It's closer to what I have down here in the bottom right-hand corner. $100,000 for injury or death to more than one person. $300,000 injury or death to more than one person. And then fifty dollars for deductible. These numbers, I'll get out of here for a second. Those numbers, those numbers can change. Okay, I want you to understand that insurance agents and companies can play with those numbers. The higher your limits, the higher your premium. Like I gave you 100, 350. Okay, that's going to have, let's say, a $2,000 premium. If I went even higher, then it, the premium would be maybe 3000 or 3500 You can actually have policies... And by the way, the in, driver's ed insurance policy isn't 100 to 300. We have well over a million dollars worth of liability damage because I swear the state thinks you're going to drive through a playground and just wipe out like 50 kids. Uh, so we have very high liability, very high liability insurance. So. Write down liability. Liability is the most important type of insurance. That pays for the medical rehabilitation, funeral bills of passengers in your vehicle and for the other driver. Just know that liability is the most important because it takes care of other people other than you. That's all I want you to write down. Don't have to write down all those numbers at the bottom. That's just telling you what most insurance policies look like. The next two parts of insurance policy that I want you to write down is collision. Collision is something that you do to your vehicle. You drive too fast around a corner, you hit a tree. You think, why would the insurance company pay for me going too fast around a corner hitting a tree? Well, they do. Isn't that nice? Your mistake for driving too fast and hitting a tree, they pay for the damages. Now, comprehensive deals with like floods, hail, being uh, scratched, on the side of your car with a key, um, a theft uh, to your vehicle. That's all under comprehensive. Now, e each one of those, um, each one of those has a money value. Like liability insurance on your policy could be like four hundred dollars. Collision could be two hundred. Comprehensive could be two hundred. So you're building an, an insurance policy. I want you to write that down. You build an insurance policy. So when an insurance agent tells you when an insurance agent tells you your policy is going to cost you two thousand dollars and you start to you know you start to choke you're thinking two thousand dollars i can't afford that he may have quoted every single thing on the policy if you drive an old vehicle like my kids always drove old driver's ed vehicles had close to two hundred thousand miles we did not need collision on that so we said take it off so there goes $200, $300 right off the policy. We just saved it right there. So that's a way to save money. What do I need on my policy? Do I need comprehensive? Do I need collision? But you probably should always have liability. Other types of policies would be medical or personal injury. If you've got a good health insurance policy, this takes care of medical bills. So it's usually tapped out around 5,000, which is like a trip in an ambulance. So you really don't need that if you have good health insurance. So you may want to take that off your policy. Roadside assistant, rental reimbursement. I never get those on my policy. They may be worth $50 to $100 a year. 
Um, I have another driver's ed vehicle that I could use if I had to. My wife basically uses it, um, so I don't need another uh, rental. Couldn't get a rental because it doesn't have a brake. Uh, roadside assistant, I have AAA, so it would be redundant to have two roadside assistant agencies helping me out. I only need one. Uninsured is important. I would definitely make sure I have this. Massachusetts is a requirement. So just realize that when you go to another state that some of these may be a requirement that you have. This pays for the medical rehabilitation, funeral bills for you and your passengers if there's some type of a crash where the driver doesn't have good coverage or no coverage at all. That's pretty important. Um, here's a good question because this happened to my daughter um, probably about six months ago. She lent out her vehicle because she been working at home quite a bit and she told a young college guy that she knows her and her husband know um, yeah you can use our car well he got hit well whose insurance pays for the damages to the car now he didn't cause it someone hit him okay my you've got to make sure that your insurance policy covers you l lending out your vehicle to somebody else Okay, so you have to find that find that out. A lot of people says a common myth is that if your friend is borrowing your car, has insurance, then it's your friend's insurance policy that covers any damages. It's not true. It's still your vehicle. It's your insurance. Even though no one uh, on the policy was uh, behind the wheel of the car, it was somebody else, it's still your policy. Your car doing the damage or receiving the damage. So just remember that. Uh, males versus females. So I want you to write this down. Males usually pay more. Now from, and I told you, you should shop around uh, your insurance policy every three years because you're going to find someone that's cheaper than what you've got right now. But here's like, I think there's like 10 to 12 companies here, and pretty some big name companies. Some companies, the premium is more for the male. On some companies, like on AAA, uh, females are paying more than males. So it's up to the company to come up with what they want to charge people. It's not across the board. So the more companies that you contact, who would ever want to get Liberty Mutual? And I actually did have Liberty Mutual for a while, but I did find them to be quite expensive. Who would want Liberty Mutual? That's $1,200. I mean, the cheapest one there, let's see, is it looks like for a female, it's going to be a triple A. No, Geico. Geico's the cheapest for a female. Look at, it's almost double. It is double. So if you just went with Liberty Mutual, you're paying an extra $600. You could have pocketed that and bought new tires for your car or something. You don't want to get caught getting ripped off. So this is what I want you to write down on how to save money. Compare rates every year or two. Uh, three years would probably be the max. As I said before, don't carry collision or comprehensive coverage on older cars. Increase your deductible we talked about. Reduce your premiums. Take a defensive driving course. Um, anytime that you get trained. Taking driver's ed, by the way, if you were to wait till you were the age of 18 to get your driver's license, which you could have done, you're going to be probably be paying like four or $500 more a year for the next three or four years. Much more than what you paid for driver's ed. Plus you got your license for two years while you're still young and able to do things. So don't think you're gonna save money by not taking driver's ed and just getting it when you're 18. They're gonna get you on the insurance. Good grades, write that down. If you are a B average student, uh, 3.0 GPA on a scale of 4.0 or in a certain percentile of your graduating class, you get a discount, 10 to 15 percent. So if you're paying, you know, fifteen hundred, two thousand dollars, that's going to be, you know, three hundred bucks. That's that's a good amount of money. In a couple of years, you have en enough money to buy a new iPhone. Pay your bills up front, like we just saw from the insurance agent. Best one here: go in your parents' policy. That's the cheapest way to go. 
If you buy your own car and insure it yourself, I'll guarantee you you're looking at probably $1,500 to $2,500 for insurance. But if you go in your parents' policy, I'll almost guarantee it's going to be less than $1,500, probably under $1,000 for females. And then always get a car that's less popular amongst thieves. Insurance rates are based upon the vehicle being repaired. How much does it cost to get repaired? Because newer cars cost more to get repaired than older cars. Uh, same thing with um, injuries. You know, if the car isn't very safe, there's going to be more substantial injuries. So we're going to be putting out more for rehab and medical bills. So we're going to charge you more for insurance. So safe cars pay less. Um, they can't steal your car. You pay less. And what we're finding is that if you go on to certain insurance companies and look at what they offer for young drivers, and here it says safe drivers in selected states could save with the Intella Drive program. It's a 90-day program that uses a smartphone app that captures and scores your behavior driving. So like I was telling you about going fast around corners, braking early, all these things can be monitored through your vehicle. So if they find that you have safe driving habits, you know, you're a safe driver. You're going to save maybe up to 20%. So, and notice it is available in New Hampshire. So that is one of the states that you can do that. Um, the other thing that I don't think I have it right here is that a lot of insurance companies are uh, providing apps that you can do your crash report on the app. So let me show you um, one photo claim company. When small accidents happen, don't let it take up more time than it has to. Let Allstate's quick photo claim help get you back to your routine without the extra hassle. Once you've downloaded the Allstate mobile app, you can use quick photo claim to submit your damages easily on your smartphone. The quick photo claim feature within the Allstate mobile app is designed to use photos of your vehicle to provide a repair quote for minor damage without having to meet an adjuster or visit a body shop. To begin, make sure you're in a safe, well-lit area and that you have a good cellular connection. Open your Allstate app and select Quick Photo Claim from the home screen. After entering your claim number, the app will prompt you to take at least three photos of the damaged area. To avoid glare, turn your mobile camera's flash off. Tap the screen to focus the camera if the shot seems blurry. Next, Quick Photo Claim provides a frame for you to take photos of all four corners of your vehicle. The last step is to capture a photo of your odometer and VIN. The app will show you multiple locations where you can find your VIN on your vehicle. After the photos are submitted, an adjuster will review the information. Claim payments can be set up through the Allstate mobile app if you are registered and logged into my account. Small accidents don't have to be a hassle. Download the Allstate mobile app and let Quick Photo Claim handle your fender bender in no time. Available for download in the App Store or Google Play. And I'm sure that most insurance companies have an app something like this. So this is the technology that we're going uh, into. And so remember, this is not uh, making a claim with the state of New Hampshire. Those are two separate things. So you have to do the accident report with the state and then you have to contact your insurance company and do it through the app or they'll talk you through it on the telephone or you can even go online you know, and maybe do it through an online program that you can do. So I'm gonna put the, um, the sheet up here again just so you can see it. So this is what you're gonna be working on. Let's see if I can move it over way over here with me. So if you take a look over halfway down where it says Section E, this is the part that I definitely want you to make sure that you do. Your insurance company name, and if there's an agent, you should know who your agent is. If there's no agent, what I want you to write down is do they give you a phone number that you have to call? I do not want your policy number. I do not want the effective date. I do want you to write down what you think make up the property damage. And by the way, the person closest to the damage uh, on the driver's ed vehicle, and most of you are well under $1,000. A lot of you thought it was like a couple hundred bucks. Jackson, you are the closest. You are off by $300. You said $3,000. That damage to the driver's ed vehicle was $3,300. A lot of money. 
for little scratches, okay, and a dent that they had to get out, okay. It was pretty, you know, pretty bad. Um, down at the bottom left-hand corner, describe the accident. I want you to do that. So do your vehicle. Do as much as you can with make it as real for your vehicle. The person that hits you or, you know, the other vehicle, you can make it up. Or if you want to do it with somebody in class, that's fine. But this is the most important sheet, this one that I just put on the board. Uh, this one right here, not so much. Um, just do section B. A and B, do not do section C, okay? Do not do section C of this report. I, d I don't think it's that necessary, okay? But I do think you knowing, you know, was it an intersection? Did the car, was the car coming from the right? What was the weather like? All that is important in section A and B. So I want you to do that. So A and B, and then do that second sheet as much as you can. So that's it for tonight. Uh, that's good. You're going to have to go online to Facebook and download that to do that. Remember to uh, read ahead for tomorrow, which will be uh, Highway Driving, Chapter 9. Do the questions in Responsible Driving. Should be about 10 to 15 questions. Do that. And we're going to be talking about road rage. So that is it. Um, hopefully tomorrow is not quite as hot. The light right here is getting extremely hot but it's not as bad as last night so that is it uh like i said we'll try to schedule some of you to drive uh on saturday because i do have uh, quite a few times opened up and uh, we'll do that tomorrow sometime so have a good night and we'll see you tomorrow we'll talk about highway driving and road rage remember to send me all your homework this week okay big push big push for the end of the program okay we'll see you tomorrow have a good night